Anyway, why do you need to know about the future is now? Because knowledge is power. And our phone number is 866-955-2233, 866-955-2233. Call anytime. It's our off-air number. But if you call now, who knows? Might be nice. In any case, let me say hello, hello Jackie, uh, watching on Facebook, which you can also watch on Facebook. And uh, you can see all of our shows, of course, the KMET website and every every page on my website at the bottom has a link right over to KMET and they have a link back to me and that's called the backlink and that's fine. And in any case, the uh, website's called the educated retirement dot com, just like the show, but it's also Dr. Heckham. This was my uh, my try at being. Uh, humorous as uh, and I used to wear that I guess I could now and then my doctor's uh, gizmo drhecm dot com heckam of course stands for home equity conversion mortgage drhecm dot com and the website has everything about the show everything about retirement not just me not just finance but everything so Remember, you can find either with drheckham.com or theeducatedretirement.com. And once there, you'll see a lot of great articles, stories, and especially a lot of videos. So some from me and some from very highly regarded people in the financial field that are here to help people who are a little bit older, looking at retirement. Uh, basically, you know, the reverse mortgage was not made for poor people, although, you know, it can certainly help many of them and I love to do it when possible. But it's here to uh, strengthen and make more secure. I hate to use the word securitize because that's something else. But uh, those years when most people are still not working and are expecting not to be pulling in as much income as they used to be there's also a blog on that uh on that website and then halfway down you'll see a watch live which means you can watch this show right now you can also watch a lot of other shows on kmet and there's also a uh, a link to the face i'm sorry a link to the uh, uh youtube station with just about everything sometimes i get a little behind but it's all there also so, and on the YouTube stations, I will many times, uh, I do, especially when there is guests, I do editing. I use DaVinci Resolve and I use editing to make it a little fancier, but I ain't too fancy a guy. So, so there. So speaking of other shows here on KMET, let's give our normal shout out, but such a special shout out to Let Grandpa Speak, whose show is here every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. It's And I've said this, I can't say it enough. It's the best way to start your weekend with a good and a good, happy mood. So also, don't forget the West Coast Business Review with Daryl McCants. He's actually a repeat offender on this show. And from time to time, I'm on, I am on his show. And he's going to be taking over my show on the, well, next month. And, you know, we worry about that at the time. Hopefully, a worry is the wrong word. He is on every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And they always give a plug for this show by saying that I'm a part of his advisory board, along with Bill Morris of UCI, who also has been a guest on this show. And Bill Morris has pretty much kind of become a co-host on that show, which is great because he's really a good person to watch. And their whole show is about an hour is full of interview. So it's good to have those two guys, uh, intelligent guys. I'm sorry to say that about, uh, you know, about um, Daryl, but, you know, I just have to uh, asking those questions and keeping things going. So Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show is here on KMET Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. And uh, I am uh, also on his show about once a month, not this month, not last month, uh, this month, uh, probably not because of the, you know, I'm going on vacation back to the hospital again, but that that's no big deal. So anyway, 
Remember that I do have a, J, a day job, uh, believe it or not, and it is at the loan source, which is uh, the owner of which was just on Daryl's show last Wednesday. My NMLS number, which is the number for my license for the ability to do loans, is 384565. And I do have a Department of Real Estate number, although I do not sell real estate. I just like to stay on top of that kind of thing so I can help answer questions for people who need the, those questions answered. And I can help direct people to other realtors and people that are uh, you know, strong in their area. And that number is 792-630. And uh, let's just uh, sidetrack a little bit. And, uh, you know, the... Uh, the at-home COVID-19 tests are very hard to get these days. They've just kind of run out of them out there, which reminds me also about these things. This is an N95 mask, and this is so uncomfortable. So, uh, but it is the safest one around. So, you know, I think you want to upgrade. Let me upgrade with some coffee here. Upgrade to something other than those flimsy blue masks, especially with the Omicron going around, because although it's said that it's not as serious once you get it, it's so much easier to get. And if you're not vaccinated, then it is serious. So what about those at-home tests? Private insurers must pay, but most Medicare enrollees, enrollees most of us that we're talking about here, we'll have to use the new federal website. And I'm picking up some of this stuff from an AARP article written by Deborah uh, Sosach, S-C-H-O-C-H. And uh, so if you need a rapid at-home COVID-19 test and have private health insurance, your insurer will pay up to eight tests a month for you and anyone else covered under your health plan. The new federal government uh, requirement came as the COVID-19 Omicron variant has propelled the number of U.S. coronavirus cases to the highest level ever with in one day, I think it was January 12th, there's about 800,000 new cases reported by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. And as cases mount, consumers also find that at-home tests are increasingly difficult to find and expensive. So let me give you that uh, if you don't have it already. This is uh, the uh, the website to get you and to order your free tests. Covidtests.gov. C O V I D T E S T S dot got got gov. C O V I D T E S ts.gov so many pharmacies and other stores have uh, taped signs to their front doors that say no covid tests and early in january shame on them a major national grocer was selling a single test online for 49.99 that's uh well at least it's not 50 dollars but um, uh, that's according to lindsey dawson an associate director at the Kaiser Family Foundation. That's more than twice what these tests had been cost, costing. That's kind of shameful. Anyway, in addition to the coverage insurers will provide, the federal government has launched covidtest.gov, a federal website where any American who wants an at-home rapid test can order them at no cost. The government has purchased 500 million tests and plans to buy another 500 million. Each residential household can order four tests under this program, regardless of how many people live at that address. So if there's eight of you, you can find this, you need some more. The tests will be mailed free between seven and 12 days after they're ordered. So they may be rapid in some degree, but as far as getting them, maybe not. Now, I have asked several doctors about how effective they are, and this is not medical advice in any way, shape, or form, but I think you need to be wary that those rapid tests that have been available 
are a little less than 100% accurate, and I don't know absolutely what these new ones are going to be like, if they are new ones at all. So remember that today is January 21st. It's National Hobby Day. So, you know, as we've spoken before, it's just so much healthier to stay busy. And if you're not in business or starting a business, this is the perfect time of year to pick up a new hobby or get back to an old one. I would guess any time of year would be. Uh, the great thing about having a hobby is that it can take your mind off of the pressures of work, if you are working, take your mind off the pressures of anything that may be bothering you. So find a hobby and give yourself time to take part in it on a daily or weekly basis. Uh, some uh, great hobbies are gardening. Re, uh, research shows gardening can improve your mood and lower your risk of dementia. That is, unless everything you plant dies, but that's another story. Start cooking at home more often. You'll save money and have a healthier life. Cooking is therefore therapeutic in itself. Of course, I think that would depend on what it is you cook. My hobby is not cooking, it's eating, but that's another story. Volunteer in your community and lend a hand. It will improve mental health and give people a sense of fulfillment. Read or write a book. Yeah, write a book. Reading, uh, reading uh, journaling, or blogging helps to clear your mind. And here are some ideas you can learn. Photography, and let's see some photography. As you know, Nasa Nelly is a photographer. Here is one of her uh, photographs. And what she does is she takes at least one, two, three, and probably more negatives. This is all done in the dark room with real live negatives, uh, black and white, and some have show color, but they're not color photographs. Uh, just to indulge a little, here is some of her other work. Okay. And uh, some more. And some more. And these are smaller pictures, so let's get on to a couple of larger ones, like these. Are any of these X-rated? I don't know. But, you know, Sean will take care of that. He knows the difference between one rating and another. Right, Sean? Yeah, you do. And some more. And I'll just skip now to the back cover. But, you know, I think these are great. They're very imaginative, in my humble opinion, and she's had shows many places in the world, but, you know, as far as making money, you've got to be a business person also to do that, so do it for fun. Uh, anything else on photography, uh -uh. young lady? Okay. Uh, how to play a musical instrument. You, you know, I play a great stereo, so I do that real well, but I do collect records. You know that. And that's kind of a hobby. Homebrew beer, that I, that would be pretty interesting, I think. Calligra or calligraphy. Do stand-up comedy. Well, I guess some people think that this show is a failure at stand-up com comedy because there's nothing else to it, but so be it. Build electronics or take up bird watching. Now, we have security cameras in the backyard in place, but you know what? They're not really for security. They're for bird watching. And I bet we get maybe five, I don't know, right now it's going crazy. It's that time of day. And I keep getting notifications that uh, there's birds out there. Sometimes there's squirrels out there too, but we'll get to that. So work and on- possums. And possums. And a possum, yeah. So work on jigsaw puzzles, you know, or model building. And of course with model railroading, uh, you know, that's, I love doing that. Start collecting comic books, stamps, or vinyl records. There you go. So start your new hobby or work on an old one this month. It's good for your health. It is actually good to stay busy. 
And some people are actually lucky enough to have their work as a hobby. Now, I love what I'm doing, and I can never imagine myself not doing it, but some people have to do it, and some people do it because they just want to keep being happy. It's also, what else is it today? It's squirrel. You up. show your treats? Huh? Oh, that's right. Tra I forgot. I got now, I did not build this, but I'm just going to show you. Uh, oh. This has got one of the one of the things here. This is somebody whose name I should have handy, but I don't right now. But he built this for me, and uh, it's got a little band here so that when I connect it, as it rolls along the track, the uh, the uh, telescope moves around. Then, of course, stargazing is another one of our hobbies. Uh, Next, please. And I have the next one just to show you another. Uh, I didn't build it. This is an LGB piece. Uh, this was to uh, celebrate a show that was in Florida. And there is one of the main residences of Florida right there. And just to show you one more real quick, this goes on a flat car. And bubbles come. I, there's, I think there's music, too, that comes out of this and bubbles. So I guess we should use this when we talk about Lawrence Welk, which we've done so many times before. Anyway, just to show you some of that. Uh, by the way, the guy that bu built that one observation thing, uh, he built also for me a uh, scale model of that largest railroad cannon that was ever built. It was a German thing. It's about, it's at least four feet long or longer with a lot of articulated wheels so that it will roll on G scale or, you know, tracks, but I don't run it very, it's just mostly to look at, but it's a, a real work of art. Speaking of works of art, another fella, um, Samuel Muncy. Uh, built this and so many other things. Uh, just amazing. We've got, oh, look at all these controls I forgot I had. He built so many things over here on the shelf. Maybe another time I can show them. But uh, again, good for your health. And what else is it today? It's Squirrel Appreciation Day. And those squirrels are mm, really signaling the uh the uh the cameras the quote uh security cameras and i gotta admit squirrels may be rodents but they are cute ain't they i guess i wonder if rats were to act the same way if we would find them also cute cute don't no. know no. squirrels may be considered rodents but they play a critical role in the environment this holiday was started by north carolina wildlife rehabilitator Christy McCowan as a way to encourage people to put out seeds and nuts for these cute creatures. We put seeds and nuts out for birds, but guess who comes and gets them? Now, the squirrels seem to be at different hours. They don't really share the ground too often with birds, but, you know, there's plenty for everybody, so, you know, no big deal. Squirrels like to bury little bits of food, seeds, nuts, and bark, yeah, they have front teeth that always grow. Didn't know that, always have their baby teeth in the front. So they chew on the bark and other things like that to grind them down. And then they put them in collections and they can visit later for a snack. And uh, they amaze scientists with their ability to remember where these food stockpiles are. Even more amazing is the average squirrel will bury thousands of these little treasures during the year, not just one, but thousands of groupings. And squirrels can find food buried beneath a foot of snow, either their stash or another squirrel's stash. A squirrel may lose 25% of their buried food to thieves, and a squirrel may pretend to bury a nut to throw off other squirrels. Wow, those sneaky little suckers. Over time, this behavior changes the composition of a forest and they will expand forests and change the types of trees that are there. 
So why should you like squirrels? Not only are they nature's gardeners, but they are also nature's comedians. They have zany behaviors, which we like to personalize, even though they may not be saying what we think they are. I mean, they really keep us going. And they are entertaining to watch. They will tell you off by flicking their tails over their heads and make chirping noises. So that's what that is. And I thought they were being loving. And there are so many species of squirrels to appreciate. They come in lots of shapes and sizes. Worldwide, there are nearly 300 species of squirrels, and they are members of the rodent family and range in size from two and a half inches long, the African pygmy squirrel. Uh, well, small picture for a small squirrel. That is a little sucker. And I don't think I would, well, I would assume that the... Uh, Security camera would pick it up if it moved, but I don't think we got any of them little tykes around here. Uh, to the Ratufa, R-A-T-U-F-A, of India, which can grow three feet in length. And that is a pretty dark picture, so hopefully that will show up. Uh, I don't know. I'll get it close to the camera. And I'll take it a little further away. That is very, very colorful, though. It's got black, dark blue, it looks like, and maroon. That's pretty cool. Oh, here's another picture showing its tail hanging down below. Again, not an easy picture to see on video, but we'll give it a try. What do you think? Okay. So, three feet. So next time you see a squirrel, say, hello, squirrel, which reminds me of Ralph Cramden and hello, ball, when he does his learning routine yeah. of learning golf. Still amazing, amazing uh, episodes. Well, all the episodes of The Honeymooners were absolutely amazing. I still think the best situation comedy to ever exist, which lasted, of course, only one season so it's the half hour but i think we can just march on through unless sean do you have advertisers you need to break for okay so let's now see if nasa nelly is coming down from the international space station i don't hear the, the retro rockets where are those retro rockets? Maybe she's... Oh, okay. All right. All right. So NASA Nelly is definitely on Earth. So we're going to hand it over to... She's going to give us uh, an update on a couple of stories about UFOs and cowboy country and the Webb Telescope update. So take it away, NASA Nelly. Hart, is there a telescope approaching? The Webb Space Telescope is 90% of the way to its destination. As of yesterday, the Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most powerful telescope ever launched, is now over 860,000 miles from Earth and less than 362,000 miles to go to squeeze into its parking spot at the L2 orbit. Its hot side is 134 degrees and the cold side is minus 340 degrees. All of the 18 primary mirror golden segments and the secondary mirror is now fully deployed. Each segment is controlled by seven actuators that will allow precise movements. NASA must conduct the process of fine tuning every mirror's position to turn 18 individual views into one large ultra powerful mirror. The entire process will take two to three months. The scope has one more key deployment milestone to complete a trajectory burn that will direct the observatory into orbit around its L2 parking spot. It is expected to complete this final arrival maneuver on Sunday, January 23rd. The web is now several steps closer to peering into the history galaxies. Now, UFO sightings in Stephenville. Stephenville, Texas, once considered to be the cowboy capital of the world with lots of open land and endless Texas sky was about to be known for something entirely unworldly. On January 8, 2008, dozens of residents 
spotted UFOs and described them as faster than a speeding bullet and larger than a Walmart. Several people, including a pilot and a police officer, said a UFO hovered over a farming community for about five minutes before streaking away into the sky. One pilot reported that it had flashing strobe lights and was completely silent. He said it darted away as they were followed by two fighter jets that were hopelessly outmaneuvered. A law enforcement officer claimed he was walking to the car when he saw a red glowing object that was suspended about 3,000 feet in the air. He was awestruck and compared it to a welder's torch. One witness, Rick Soros, was to hear deer hunting when he saw the object in detail, how it had no seams, no rivets or welds on the surface. It looked like it was completely covered in one piece of sheet metal with a grid pattern as it hovered above the trees and then gone. He said, if it's not ours, then we're in trouble. Steve Allen, a 50-year-old licensed pilot and owner of a local trucking company, was at a campfire with friends and said the object was a mile and a half wide. He said it flipped us all out. I don't know if it was a biblical experience or somebody from a different universe or whatever, but it was definitely not from around these parts. He drew a sketch of the object, which he said traveled at amazing speed without making a sound. He said he saw an arch shape converted into a vertical shape, and then it split and made two of them. And then these turned out into just fire, and it was gone. He said it looked like something firing up like a blowtorch. The group said the lights were then followed by two military jets and two massive red orbs. A few days later, he flew over the area to see if he could find evidence, but found nothing. A spokesman for the 301st Fighter Wing in Fort Worth says, no aircraft from his base was in the area. Another said that it's an unidentified flying object. It was so fast I couldn't track it with my binoculars. Military officials said that the over 200 witnesses were letting their imagination run away and claimed it was merely an optical illusion, including the fighter jets. The sighting hit the media and energized believers. The Stephenville Empire Tribune, the local paper, had received calls from as far away as Finland and Japan as people remained fascinated about the reports of a bright object in the sky that witnesses said was a mile long. Stephenville welcomed the arrival of ufologists and reporters as they flocked from all over as the military insisted that over 200 observers shared a common distraction towards Maybelline. The education reporter for the Tribune, Angelina Joyner, was supposed to be reporting on schools but pursued the UFO story because she was swamped with calls. She said, as much as I would have liked to cut it off, I couldn't. I could, didn't want to abandon the witnesses. The television crews showed up. Good Morning America, NPR, Larry King with CNN, and MUFON. People wore aluminum foil alien hats at the baseball games and the high school science club sold t-shirts with a picture of a cow being beamed up to a spaceship and actually netted $7,000 for college scholarships. The principal said money just fell out of the sky. Tribune's Angelina Joyner quit the paper and signed on as a special correspondent for the Jerry Pippen radio show, which regularly reported on unexplained phenomena. The following April, she gave a talk at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. about covering the Stephenville incident. So like it or not, all eyes were now trained on the sky over Stephenville to see whether any mysterious flying objects returned. The UFOs over Stephenville hit the media from all over. It was the biggest mass sighting since the Phoenix Lights. One moment, please. Just a couple more visuals. And thank you, NASA Nelly, so much for that. Now, who are some of those people I showed pictures of? Those, do you witnesses. know? Witnesses. Just witnesses. Yeah. So, officially, one is witness number one, and the other one is witness number two, so don't forget their names. But that, was, that wasn't all that long ago, no. and I remember when it happened, that we knew some people at the time that had relatives there, and, uh, you know, the only thing, we have some relatives in Phoenix, too, but nobody saw the Phoenix lights. 
So speaking of light, let me correct this on me. Oh, and don't I look so much better now? Don't answer that, please. So you know what? There's one picture I missed here. And the only reason I have this picture is because when we were talking about hobbies, one was collecting antiques. And I know that uh, Dennis Keithley now in... Uh, in Fresno is out looking for the Fresno Nightcrawler, but other than that, uh, I just love this picture, so I'm going to show it. And uh, you know, it just has to do with antiques, collecting antiques. Uh, we have different type of antiques. I'm looking at a uh, a popcorn heater with bags and that kind of thing over there, a jukebox over there, uh, a uh, super shell. Uh, gas tank gas pump over there and the other room has uh, some weird things like a i think you can see in the background sometimes a uh, gumball machine from the 50s that's in the uh, shape of a uh, rocket and there's still gumballs from that period of time in there and uh also a bumper car and that kind of thing but in any case let's get on with uh the business at hand which is nostalgia